So I wanted to post a response to Corey's video about this oil spill in the Gulf of Mexico. Um, you know, I agree with everything Corey said, and I, I really am dismayed and somewhat frustrated by this tragedy because how are we really to respond? Um, I'm helpless. And so apparently so is BP. They have no idea how to stop uh, this this leak. Um, and anyway, I just made a video about the effects, the downward causative effects of social bodies upon the individual human beings that make them up. And in the case of British Petroleum, in the case of this corporation, I think the effects are um, obvious. You know, when one works for a corporation, especially in an upper managerial uh, position, and in the sense that then you'd sort of identify with the success or failure of this corporation, then it's very obvious that your day-to-day -day actions are somewhat governed by this larger social organism, this larger corporate person that you belong to. And in its modern incarnation, the corporate person's only motivations uh, are profit. And in fact, the corporation is legally obligated to make a profit. So there's this notion of um, you know, survival of the fittest or an invisible hand operating above individual corporations that somehow assures that the evolution of human ecosystems moves in a, a positive and mutually beneficial direction. And, you know, I've written a, um, it's, it's a long paper, I guess it, it's almost a book, though I think um, some of the uh, arguments need to be tied together a little bit better, but um, and I wanted to read the first two paragraphs of it just to give you an idea of what I'm trying to do in this paper because I think it's really very relevant to the sorts of moral questions, and not just moral questions, but the, the metaphysical and the cosmological questions that we have to ask in light of this catastrophe and the way that we are trying to understand it. You know, we're, as Corey said, we're trying to put a dollar figure on it. We're, we're trying to monetize uh, this catastrophe in order to understand the, the extent of the loss um, that we will experience as a result of it. And I think that is an effect of a deficient uh, cosmology. Um, Techno-industrial capitalism is the reigning cosmology at the moment. It's our religion, our secular religion, if you will. And in my paper, I'm trying to get to the metaphysical roots of this belief system that we don't realize, and most of us don't realize we participate in. We take it for granted. We don't think it's a religion. Um, and we don't recognize that it's sort of motivating a lot of our behaviors. And, you know, part of the problem is that we've separated human economics from ecology, from the ecology of the biosphere. We've assumed that these two things exist as if in separate worlds. Um, so let me, let me just read the first two paragraphs and I'll post a link to this, uh, this paper on my blog so you can read the rest of it if it sounds interesting. And I don't claim to have solved any of, of these problems. I'm really just pointing out the problem. And I throw a few suggestions here and there based on uh, some authors that I've, I've read and um, tried to synthesize in the paper. But uh, So uh, this is from the preface. The relative success of the human endeavor, measured in terms of population and technological mastery, has been won at the cost of widespread suffering for much of the rest of the community of life on Earth. Life is not just a quantitative affair, but is everywhere striving to deepen the qualitative intensity of its existence. Industrial civilization has emerged amidst this vital striving, violently shifting the biosphere into the terminal phase of the Cenozoic era by initiating the first mass extinction event in 65 million years. In the deep geological past, Saurian giants and cycads flourished 
where long stretches of highway now carry automobiles, fueled by their fossilized remains. Should our species continue to ignore the psycho-spiritual wounds responsible for instituting and maintaining our ritualized techno-industrial sacrifice of future generations, we will soon find ourselves joining the dinosaurs. This essay is my attempt to reveal the metaphysical causes and the energetic effects of industrial capitalism such that its inhumane and, e and ecologically ignorant foundations are brought fully into consciousness. Consciousness is our most creative human capacity, but in its fragmented and anxiety-ridden deficient mental mode, which is a phrase I get from Jean Gebser, whose ideas are worked throughout the paper, or worked into the paper uh, throughout its length. Um, consciousness in its fragmented and anxiety-ridden deficient mental mode has become the agent of the most powerful strategy of thermodynamic gradient dissipation the planet has ever known. Should human consciousness fail to awaken in time to forestall the inevitable conclusion of the industrial process. Not only will capitalist profits continue to be squeezed out of the alienated labor of workers and commoditization continue to homogenize cultural expression, but Earth will become a toxic wasteland, eaten alive from the inside out by the mechanical transformation of extropy, which is also called neg entropy. It's basically uh, usable energy, which oil uh, for the last 100, 150 years or so has been uh, a great uh, carrier or medium of extropy where there's a lot of usable energy stored in a, a way that can be exploited rather efficiently though it's growing more and more difficult as the wells uh, are more and more out of reach. Um, but uh, So let me read that sentence again. Should human consciousness fail to awaken in time to forestall the inevitable conclusion of the industrial process not only will capitalist profits continue to be squeezed out of the alienated labor of workers and commoditization continue to homogenize cultural expression, but Earth will become a toxic wasteland, eaten alive from the inside out by the mechanical transformation of extropy into the fetishized value of money and use and dispose consumables. Uh, so yeah, that's a little taste of, of what I try to do in this paper, and again, the link will be in the description. Uh, it's a pretty long paper. It's like 75 pages uh, when, when double-spaced and not back-to-back. -back. So be prepared for a long haul. Thanks for listening. And, uh, you know, I'm hoping that the only good thing that might come out of this oil spill is an increase in the awareness of people of the crisis that our planet has been faced with even prior to this oil spill and this is just sort of though it's quite real it also serves as a symbol uh, for what is wrong with our civilization at this point in history and the fact that it that the barge or not the barge but the uh, oil platform exploded killing 11 or 12 people um, on Earth Day April 20th um, that's kind of uh, symbolic, uh, a little synchronicity there that I, I think is, is quite significant. Um, Earth Day is the 20th, right? I'm not sure. Whenever Earth Day was, the fact that that happened on that day, you know, seems like a message is being sent to us. Um, I hope we hear it. <laughs>